I'll never forget that sound. The crashing of feet on dry leaves, passing my tent. It was fast, like I'd been visited by an Olympic sprinter three minutes to midnight. The first time it happened, I grabbed my gun and searched the surrounding area. Nothing, not a trace. Settling in my sleeping bag, it wasn't five minutes before something ran past the tent once more. Ten minutes later, I heard it again. Then nothing further as I waited for the sun to rise. The wilderness has always been my home away from home, my escape when life was awry. I've been on more camping trips than I can count, mostly alone. You see, I don't like people. So after many years abroad, another visit to the outdoors was way overdue. I'd been scoping out a new camping site for a while. It was a few hours outside of town, but the reviews online were nothing short of glowing. This place prided itself on being for the solo traveller, with enough space for campers to pitch their tents without bothering each other. I was sold. With the essentials packed, including my Beretta 92 pistol for safety, I made my way down the highway and eventually arrived at the location's reception office. While some people are more adventurous, I prefer to explore areas curated for campers. Sure, it comes with an entrance fee, but at least I'm unlikely to stumble on the land of a lunatic with a shotgun. As I stepped into the reception, I was immediately struck by a feeling of emptiness. It wasn't because I was alone. This was a primal reaction that I felt in my gut, like the space around me was stealing my energy. As ridiculous as that sounds, it's the best description I've been able to come up with. Reaching the front desk, I called out for someone to assist me. It was almost two in the afternoon, and I knew that the camping site would be preceded by a short hike, as displayed on a nearby map. I didn't have to wait long before an old man in a blue cardigan arrived through the back office door. This guy was old, very old, at least 90 if I were to hazard a guess. He didn't act like it though, he spoke like a younger man and was far friendlier than his grim appearance would lead you to believe. Taking me through the rules and regulations of the land, he swiftly began saying something about the history of the area. Now, I'm not a rude person, but my adventure was calling and I had barely been paying attention to what was being said. Perhaps too bluntly, I told the old man that I needed to be on my way. He was disappointed, sad in fact, but he didn't hesitate to guide me towards the start of the trail. Before I left, I was handed a pair of keys that would unlock a gate at the mouth of the forest. Finally, my holiday could begin. Despite the reception's map stating that the forest was two miles away, it took me many hours to reach the towering trees displayed on the website. At first, I wondered if my pace was too slow, but I knew I was as fit as I had ever been. I was surprised that the map was so wrong, but I didn't think much of it. By the time I reached the gate, the sun had begun to set. Standing before the metal barrier, I noticed that the fences on each side stretched into an endless blur. I looked up at the massive tree line and peeked beyond the gate to see the wild world that I was eager to enter. I tried valiantly, but the key didn't work. Its shape didn't even match the lock. The many odd elements of this trip started to add up but I shook it off as I was in dire need of a meal and my thoughts would only slow me down. I suppose what I did next was illegal, but like I said, I had little energy for an alternative solution. Thankfully, the gate was quite short, so I tossed my bag and joined my belongings by climbing up and over. At this point, I wasn't picky about a camping location, so I searched for the first bit of flat open land. Passing the hulking trees, the day's last sunlight shone through the branches. 
I stopped and appreciated nature's beauty for a brief moment. To my despair, this pause brought on the same feeling I had at the reception office. My stamina was waning, so instead of finding an appropriate piece of ground, I immediately put up my tent and prepared an outdoor area for cooking. With a week's supply of beans ready to prepare, I decided to lie down and rest before starting the fire. I hadn't planned on sleeping just yet, but after closing my eyes for a second, I was out like a light. I'll never forget the sound that woke me up. Something ran past my tent. Initially, I wondered if it was an animal, but four feet colliding with the ground is more distinct than you might think. Whatever this was, it was on two legs. I searched the area quite thoroughly, but found no sign of the unwelcome visitor. Back in my tent, I heard the noise two more times. On both occasions, I rushed out to catch my guest in the act. Again, nothing. I didn't get any more sleep that night. My mind was buzzing with theories. Maybe it was a bear on its hind legs. No, it ran too quickly. If it was human, why was it running in the woods? I have no idea. Thinking back now, what was more chilling than the crumbling leaves was the eerie silence when I was waiting for the sound to come back. The new day brought more questions as I quickly learned that my surroundings weren't what I expected. Exiting the tent, I noticed the ashes of a burnt out fire. Had I started it before collapsing the night before? It didn't make sense as I surely would have noticed the scorched wood when I searched the area at midnight. Although I suppose the unwanted intruder had my attention at the time, I knew it was best for me to leave. I had planned to camp for five days, but one bizarre night was more than enough for me. The thought of the long hike back to the reception was daunting, but for the first time in my life, civilization was more appealing than the outdoors. As I packed my bags, I once again started to become drowsy. Was this due to my lack of sleep, or was it something else? I still don't know. Luckily, I have done training to operate on little rest, so packing my bags wasn't difficult. I was tired, but with my pistol strapped to my leg, I was ready to go. Tracking my movements from the day before, I followed the opening of the trees. I had sworn that I didn't travel that far into the woods but after walking for an hour, I realized that I must have been wrong. I knew I had gone the right way. After all, I pride myself on my sense of direction. Once I reached one hour and 32 minutes, I shifted my focus from the ground to the trees. While much of the bark surrounding me was in a reddish brown shade, there were a few unique prints in the color gray. That's when I realized I was walking in a loop. I timed it on my watch. Every 12 minutes and 16 seconds, I passed a giant redwood with a gray marking in the shape of an eagle's head. Every 16 minutes and 11 seconds, I passed a tree that looked like it was decaying. This happened over and over for what felt like hours. I tried everything, going in the opposite direction, moving horizontally, yet I remained stuck in the same cycle. My spirit was willing, but my body was weak, and after walking an endless path, I passed out amongst the dry leaves. Perhaps I shouldn't have been surprised at what woke me up, but I was startled nonetheless. The sound of the runner returned, but I didn't have the tent to protect me. The thin fabric wouldn't have done anything, but its absence still left me feeling bare. My instincts kicked in, and I reached for my gun. Rising to my feet, I pulled out my flashlight and applied the Harris technique, crossing my arms to prepare for combat in the dead of night. The noises continued as I searched for its origin. I noticed a quick shadow in the corner of my right eye and turned. Firing two bullets, there was nothing there. The sound came back this time, behind me. 
It took me only a second to spin my body and pull the trigger three times. Again, nothing. I repeated this pattern until all 15 rounds were spent. I remember wondering if I was going mad, but the thought was fleeting as my eyes and ears had never deceived me before. I don't mean to brag, but I'm good with a firearm. I can hit a target from a distance, even a moving one. In most situations, I am certain about my abilities, but not here. Every time I missed the target and splattered wood on the floor, I felt my confidence depleting. For the first time in my life, I felt that death could be near. I was scared. With my options depleted, I chose a direction and ran. My boots made a considerable impact on the ground, but I swear I heard a second set of feet not too far behind me, keeping up with my pace. Maybe it was an act of God, maybe it was luck, whatever it was, I soon arrived at the locked gate that swallowed me into the forest. At the time, I barely questioned why it was opened. I simply pushed through and continued towards the reception office and entered its walls after 46 minutes. My memory here gets a bit hazy, but I do remember that the building had its lights off. However, this was no concern for me. As after slamming through the front door, I jumped in my car and drove home. I wish I could end this story with a shocking plot twist or powerful life lesson. But this camping trip is as mysterious today as it was the day I exited the forest. If I didn't know any better, I'd say that I briefly entered another dimension. But if I tell anyone what I think, I fear that they'll have me locked up at the funny farm. If I'm being completely honest, this trip left me feeling alive more than I have been in a long time. I'm writing this with my bag packed in front of me. Even though the website for the camping site has been taken down, I vividly remember the directions to its reception. I don't know what's going to happen, but I am sure of one thing in particular. This time, I'll pay close attention to what the old man has to say. <laughs>